This is a sliding mesh gearbox that has five different settings for the effects of the output. Those being neutral, first gear, second gear, third gear, and reverse. This gearbox serves as a form of power transmission, meaning that it transmutes energy from an input source at one end into mechanical work as an output at another end, which can then be used in applications consisting of heavy-duty machinery, older manual vehicles, industrial applications, and etc. Now although this system may appear complicated, it really isn't, and by the end of this video, you'll understand exactly how this sliding mesh gearbox works. So how does it work then? Let's first get familiar with the components, and for simplicity's sake, I'll remove the gears here in the back and save them for later, leaving us with three sections to pay attention to only. The input section, counter section, and output section. The input section contains the clutch shaft and clutch gear, which are directly connected to a power input. In the case of a car, the power source would be an engine, but unfortunately I do not have one, and we must make do with this hand crank. Moving down, we'll find the counter section, which holds the counter shaft, counter shaft drive gear, first, second, and third counter gears. And keep in mind that the gears in this section may not move from side to side. Back up above is the output section consisting of the main shaft, then first, second, and third gear. As opposed to the counter gears, these gears can move from side to side. So then with all of that in our minds, we can note that the input and counter section is always in contact since the clutch gear is forced to always mesh with this drive gear. On the other hand, we can't say the same between the counter and output section since we know that the output gears are allowed to move horizontally. The two sections can then only be connected if the output gears move into this position, or this position, or this one. Therefore, they must slide in order to mesh, and that statement got this system its name, the sliding mesh gearbox. So what if none of the output gears are meshing with the counter gears? Well, then the system would be in neutral. And being in neutral means that although the system may be supplied with power, the movement of the main shaft doesn't depend on it. First gear. In order to shift into the setting, the first gear must mesh with its respective counter gear below it. And in this setting, you may notice that the rotational output speed is a lot slower, a lot slower than the input, and as a matter of fact, this setting is the slowest. However, there is a trade-off for that speed, that being torque. Torque can be explained briefly as rotational force, and although this first gear is the slowest setting, it also is the strongest. But why would a gearbox need a high amount of strength? Well, you'd probably need it if moving a car from rest, since it's literally a huge chunk of metal that weighs more than 3,000 pounds. Second gear. Shifting into second gear, we can see that the output is a step up in speed compared to the first gear, but still slower than the output speed. On the contrary, second gear will be a step down in torque compared to that of the first gear, but still with greater torque than the input. Now you're probably starting to see a bit of a theme at this point, that being the inversely proportional relationship between rotational speed and torque in gear systems. Now, the reason we'd shift into second gear is to have a more gradual transition between first gear and second gear, since first gear is the slowest setting and third gear is the fastest. And as a matter of fact, when we're in third gear, the main shaft has the same rotational speed as the output does. And if it's the highest speed, what might you expect of the torque? That's right, the system's output torque would be indeed the lowest in the third gear. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, because would we even need a high torque in a fast-moving vehicle if momentum is already moving it forwards? Alright, so now I'm gonna put back these two gears that I removed earlier, since it's necessary for the last setting to function. Reverse. In this case, the main shaft rotates in the direction opposite to the clutch shaft. This happens because the short shaft in the back here has two gears, the reverse gear and the reverse idler gear. 
The reverse gear meshes with the counter shaft gear in order to connect the counter section and the reverse section. Then the purpose of the reverse idler gear is to connect the reverse section to the output section when their gears mesh. Having talked about the math, applications, and abilities of the sliding mesh gearbox, that's all I got to say for this video. I really hope you enjoyed this video, but more importantly learned. If you're new here, I'm glad to have you. My name is Aaron, and I study mechanical engineering, design models of mechanisms, print them, and then I go on to talk about them right here on YouTube. If that intrigues you, go watch another, and I will see you next time.